Good afternoon. Obviously, uh, you're all aware of uh, the events of today, and um, when when you when you engage in a process like this, it's no matter no matter how it ends, you always have a disappointing feeling. And when you think back of our time with with Albert Pujols, in, in the sense of being a part of our draft, being someone that comes up through our system, and and then produces to the level of greatness that he did. Uh, you, you, you really form a bond with a player like this, and, and it's, it's, it's more than just a, a player front office relationship, it's a friendship, and uh, he was really such an integral part of this community and this organization. And it's a disappointing day, but it's a day that, that um, we knew was a possibility. And, and as, we, as we sit here now, we're gonna refocus our energy and, and uh, look at different ways we can deploy our resources and, and make sure that 2012 is, uh, is exciting and fun to watch and um, that we put an exciting product out there that our fans are accustomed to seeing. So um, at this time, I'll take a few questions and, and we'll go from there. Mo, at what point did you realize that it might not be going in your direction? Was there some point where you realized, okay, this is out of our and? Not really. Um, it was a very fluid situation, one that there was a lot of give and take, a lot of ups and downs. Yesterday was, I, I would say, the most dramatic day of all in terms of, of really uh, focusing in on, on the uh, negotiation. And I was notified this morning, and that's when I knew it was uh, directionally going the wrong way. Did you know at any point you were competing against $250 million? I mean, No. No, we had no idea. Um, and when we looked at this process, this really wasn't about what the market was doing as so much as what we could do. And uh, um, everybody that was very close to this process knew we were, we were stretching and putting ourselves in, in a situation that was becoming a little uncomfortable, but one that we were trying to do and we thought was worth it. So at no time, Mo, were you being presented with, hey, we have an offer over here for X. Can you get to that level? No, they never put us in a position to do that. Um, which I think shows a lot about Albert and his representation. They, they never pinned us like that, no. When you, when you hear the number and see the number, do you feel better knowing that you didn't get beat by a dollar? Um, absolutely. Because when I heard that number, I said, wow. Man, that's big. I'm sorry? What was the difference? I have no idea. Um, it, it hasn't really been explained to me in any deep thought. I did, I did speak with Albert earlier, and um, we didn't get into to contracts or terms or anything like that. It was, it was simply about just wishing well and, and, and sort of reflecting back on his time here. And, and uh, it was a very pleasant conversation and, and one that I think uh, um, we both felt good about. Did you leave yourselves exposed to this kind of massive offer by not making a deal or that you made, been able to make the deal earlier, not been in this situation? Well, uh, apparently. Um, obviously, if uh, we were able to make a deal earlier, we, we would have had no exposure. Uh -huh. But, um, you know, once you go to open market, things happen. And I think, you know, in terms of, of why we didn't get a deal done, whether it was last year or, or previous years, um, I would ha you'd have to ask their rep his representation, but I imagine this is exactly what they wanted to see happen eventually. There's the perception that you guys kind of stood pat, let this play out. Were there multiple attempts in the past few years to? We lie? had discussions in in terms of uh, sort of understanding in a framework what what something might look like if we were to get something done. But um, really, our first engagement in terms of truly putting an offer on the table would have been last January. What did Albert have to say? Did you thank you thank you for his time here? Or oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, he was very gracious and and. Uh, as you would expect. I mean, he's a professional. He knows how to act and, and knows what to say. And, and um, again, we've known each other a long time, so it was, it was an easy conversation with that regard. What's the sense of loss for the franchise, not just in losing out, losing the face of the franchise, someone who's been so identified with this? What's, what's that like? Um, you know, I think that's hard to tell right now. Uh, the, the big thing when, when you look at it is, is the word franchise, and, and that's the most important part of all of this, and it's, it's maintaining a winning tradition that is steeped with a great history. And so I don't think any time you put one man ahead of that, I think that's when things start to go wrong. And so for us, it's always about looking at ways to win, make sure this brand is growing and, and our fan base is, is enjoying the product we're putting out there. Uh, there's no doubt when you lose an individual talent, 
that makes for a difficult day. But in the end, it's going to come down to how we play on these out years. And, and so ownership, myself, that's what we're responsible for doing. Well, what happens to Albert Pujols' brand because of this move that he made? I don't know. I, I, I don't think I could speak for that. I, you know, I, I think when you look at individual players and, and what it does for them, I think it really will be determined on, on, on how things go for him when he gets out to uh, L.A. But, I mean, he had a chance here to be Ripken, Gwynn, you know. Usual. Usual. Uh, <laughs> you're right. Um, and, and I think from that regard, it's, it's no longer there. How would you define the talks with Lozano? Were they ever acrimonious? Very professional. Um, no, I mean, look, you know, these kind of talks, there's always ups and downs. And, and uh, as you could imagine, something of this length, these dollars, things get tense. But it was, it was still very professional. Do you think in the end it did just come down to the money, the difference? I don't know. I'm not going to speak for anyone. Um, that is not for me to say. No, and nor did I ask any questions like that. I, you know, I, I don't think when I was notified, it, I sort of looked at it as spilt milk, and I wasn't, like, trying to talk him back into something. You guys felt, though, you extended yourselves as far as you could go. Oh, absolutely, and beyond. How much has this held you back, this, these negotiations, other things you might have wanted to do? Um, you know, it's obviously uh, it, it, it created a... Uh, a situation where we weren't pursuing other options. I, I assure you, though, we've 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 got our irons in the fire now, and um, you know, as, as as things get into next week, we'll be active, and I think we have a pretty good idea of what we want to see happen now. Do you anticipate there'll be a, a lot of things that you can get done, or <coughs> do you guys kind of? Well, that would be speculation again. I mean, obviously, anytime you start engaging in the uh, free agent market or trade market, it, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to see results, but we're certainly going to try. What does it mean not to have $200 million plus on the books that a lot of money freed up and kind of chart a new direction for this team? It really is. <laughs> I was looking at it on the airplane. I was like, wow. Um, it's, uh, it does give create some flexibility for the organization. And uh, you know, we knew that was a possibility, and, and so that's how what we'll do is try to look to redeploy those resources. Well, when you put the offers together, whether in January or this time around, how much did you project real numbers of like what you thought he was capable of in the fourth or fifth or sixth year, and how much of it was emotional, hey, we kind of want him to be here, and if this is what it takes, you know, how, how much did you kind of bend statistical analysis in favor of we like him? Great question. And, uh, you know, it's hard to quantify iconic value or superstar value. Uh, we tried. But um, uh, when you think about the, the 11 years he had here as a player, that's what we were trying to encompass and, and, and allow to keep grow because we were hopeful that it would be something that, that at the end of this contract, it would have been a cardinal for, for life with a happy, happy ending. But there was certainly some risk when you talk about those types of years. Touched on legacy a little bit, but uh, how would you put Albert's legacy with the Cardinals in the words right now? Well, I think his his 11 years here will always be known as historic, and uh, I think um, every one of us that had had the ability to be a part of it to watch it, we should all be grateful. And uh, I don't think today is a day to to reflect in, in any negative way because uh, so many great things happened in his time here, and it's over, but. The fact that we had two World Series champions uh, played in a third, um, you know, that, that's a great run. And uh, he was most certainly uh, a key member of that. The indications are the offer, the final offer from you guys, or not necessarily the final, but the most recent offer, was not all that much different from previous ones. Is, was that, did you think that was going to work? <laughs> um, well, I guess so, because we tried. Um, but uh, in all seriousness, uh, this situation was extremely fluid. There was a lot of things going back and forth and um, at, a, at a rather quick pace, too, yesterday. And, and so um, in, in terms of, of looking at change or how much substantially were they different, um, th there were significant subtleties, though, that, that were, were baked into this that um, I think uh, was, was where we felt we were starting to really push ourselves in a place maybe we couldn't be. But we went ahead and tried, and it didn't work out. Is it a 10-year offer? I'm not going to get into terms or, or dollars. It's just you know, there's a lot going on, and, and I assure you it was a robust offer. You, know, you said you spoke with Albert earlier, and you spoke with him 
couple weeks ago or whatever the case was. How often did you talk throughout this process with them? Just those two times or was there some regular talk? Um, not very often. Uh, you know, of, of late, meaning like in the last 72 hours, we did talk a, a couple times. And uh, it wasn't about things that you might think about. It wasn't necessarily negotiations. It was just sort of, you know, talking through where this may go and where it was headed and uh, um, very professional, very honest and uh, um, and very thoughtful. But in the end, um, you know, ultimately it comes down to, to someone that has to make a decision. When you think about why he made this decision, what will you tell yourself? What will I tell myself? Um, I, I think he looks at this as, as just a new opportunity, a, a new challenge and um, in one that I, th I think he felt was uh, in his best interest. And you have to honor that. that with Albert gone, Allen's obviously coming off surgery. Is there more urgency for you now to get a bat in rather soon? I don't think so. Um, you know, clearly we want to address our roster. Clearly we want to improve. Clearly we'll be willing to make some investments. But I don't think just because of what happened today, we need to have, make a knee-jerk reaction just to sign somebody to sign somebody. We have to make sure it makes sense and, and understand that, that Alan Craig is only going to be out a month or two at most, so we don't want to put a blocker in there where he can't get his at-bats. But on the same token, we want to make sure that we're very competitive because we are the uh, reigning world champs.